Thanks, Lindsay, and thanks to the ARM uh, organizers for inviting us to give this presentation. Um, um, so I'm here to talk about, of course, Regenix Bio and what we're doing here. And um, wait, I'm doing what everybody else did, which is sit here and go. Where's the thing? Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Um, so uh, the, the big news is that, from a financial standpoint, is that Regenix Bio went public several weeks ago, so now I need a disclaimer about forward-looking statements. But um, I'd like to focus on what we're really trying to do and what our mission is, which is to develop therapeutics uh, for uh, severe diseases in which there's unmet medical need. And what we focus it around is around our proprietary NAV technology platform, which is an AEV gene therapy-based platform. And what we have here is exclusive worldwide rights to over 100 novel AEV vectors, uh, which include, in particular, the ones used most often are AEV8, AEV9, and AEVRH10. Um, which are covered by many patents and patent applications. And what, is, uh, what makes them novel in particular is not just that there are new capsid proteins and new serotypes, but that many of them give higher and longer term gene expression than previously, uh, than earlier generation AEV vectors. Um, they also give some novel tissue uh, specificities, lower immune response, and improved manufacturability. Um, and there's clinical data supporting these. There are, um, so multiple clinical trials are ongoing, um, and some are completed, in fact, using NAV vectors. So there's three separately reported phase one slash two third-party clinical trials using AEV8 for the treatment of hemophilia B, and there's also a clinical trial using AEV9 to treat spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA. Um, we also have our own pipeline in gene therapy. We don't just license vectors. We also are developing our own therapeutics. And so we have five uh, product candidates in-house, including lead programs in homozygous uh, familial hypercholesterolemia, which I'll describe in a minute, and in MPS1, both of which are expected to enter the clinic within the next 12 months. Um, in addition, there are 18 product candidates that are being developed by third-party licensees, um, two of which are, of those are currently in the clinic. So a uh, very brief overview of how AAV gene therapy works and uh, how we're trying to take advantage of the features of this platform. So um, we can, of course, combine a, an AAV serotype with a gene of interest. Um, and when you uh, put that a apply that AAV to any cell, um, it the proteins on the surface of AEV bind to receptors. The um, vector gets internalized. Once internalized, it starts to uncoat to release the DNA core. Then DNA is able to migrate to the nucleus. And then, of course, once in the nucleus, the DNA can be transcribed into RNA and translated into any sort of protein you'd like to express, whether it's intracellular or secreted. Um, the DNA of the AEV typically stays episomal, so it doesn't integrate into the genome. And th so the advantage of that is that we ha um, there is very little concern about insertional mutagenesis. Um, on the other hand, because it, it does not integrate into the chromosome, um, it is extraordinarily stable, but only in tissues that aren't act are not actively dividing. So uh, because of that, what we did was we looked at this technology and say, okay, what kind of diseases can we treat? What tissue types and cell types can, can we uh, expect to be able to have a good benefit in? So the primary routes of administration with AEV that we and others are using are delivery to the central nervous system, administration to the eye, intravenous administration, which can target the liver and can potentially target other tissues also, and also intramuscular delivery. So um, in this platform, <clears throat> excuse me, how does it actually, how does it work compared to other vectors? And this is just an extraordinarily brief bit of, the, of, of much data that's, that's been published and spoken about. So um, in the top panel on the right, you can look at comparison of AEV2 versus AEV8 in mouse liver using the same dose as a vector expressing a reporter gene. And you can see that um, with AEV8, that reporter gene, when incubated with the right substrate, um, cells are all turning blue as a result of it. So expression levels are much higher than with AEV2. And in mouse liver, you can certainly transduce a, um, virtually the whole liver and get very stable expression. 
Um, and so that relates in part to the clinical trials in hemophilia B in which gene delivery is targeted to the liver there. And a New England Journal of Medicine article a couple years ago described um, the long-term safety and efficacy of factor IX gene therapy in hemophilia B. Um, in addition, in terms of novel specificities with AEV9, Brian Kaspar's group showed that intravenous AEV9 can actually cross the blood-brain barrier. And so that was a feature that hadn't been observed before with other AEVs and gives us another potential route for targeting the central nervous system. And the, um, on the bottom um, just shows a cross-section of eyes of retinas showing how much more efficient AEV8 is, which is the bright green uh, staining that you see, versus AEV2, and I will come back to that in a little bit. Um, so these also give us lower immune responses and improved manufacturability. Um, and um, the platform is, you know, protected by a broad IP portfolio uh, with more than 100 patents and patent applications worldwide. Um, so the first generation of vectors were AVs 1 through 6, and now we've covered uh, more than 100 capsid, uh, different capsids um, that, and, and, and related capsids to those, in fact. So we cover both capsids, methods for isolating them, and some manufacturing methods in addition. So in terms of clinical use of this platform, many diseases have been targeted so far. Um, and so they include um, diseases targeting the central nervous system. So that includes MPS3A, Batten's disease, metachromatic leukodystrophy, um, and then more recently a couple of trials in giant axonal neuropathy and spinal muscular atrophy. Um, some have been targeting the liver, including the hemophilia, clinical trial in the hepatitis C, and some targeted muscle, and, um, and there's now one trial in the eye, next linked retinoschisis. So most importantly, the data that have been reported to date suggests that the NAV vectors are very safe with strong efficacy evidence in both hemophilia B and SMA. Um, so what's our internal product development pipeline? Um, so we're focusing in part on metabolic diseases um, such as homozygous FH, and in terms of neurodegenerative diseases, MPS1 is our lead candidate in that area. Both of those two are expected to start uh, clinical trials in the first half of next year. Um, after MPS1, we also want to treat MPS2, a related disease. And in terms of retinal diseases, first we're uh, looking to treat wet related macular degeneration or wet AMD and then also move on to X-linked retinitis pigmentosa with an ongoing preclinical program. So uh, to go briefly over some of our lead programs, homozygous FH is caused by defects in the LDL receptor gene. Um, as a result of those defects, LDL does not get internalized, and so very high levels of LDL accumulate um, it with total cholesterol levels can be above 500 mg per deciliter. Patients get coronary artery disease at young, uh, young ages, and there is a standard of care with certain drugs, but even with those, the mean age of death is about 32 years of age. So what we're looking to do with these patients is to treat them with AEV8, encoding the LDL receptor. This is delivered intravenously to target the liver, um, because when you can correct LDL receptor gene expression in the liver, you can not only start to clear LDL cholesterol from the bloodstream, but the liver is also capable of excreting, uh, removing excess cholesterol from the body through the bile. Um, and there are uh, preclinical data in multiple mouse models that show both the correction of cholesterol levels and reduction in and regression of atherosclerosis. So we have uh, nice preclinical data on that. Um, in terms of the MPS diseases, these are lysosomal storage diseases, um, and they're caused by mutations in one of the proteins that's involved in lysosomal degradation of glycosaminoglycans. So in the absence of an enzyme, the glycosaminoglycans start to accumulate in the lysosome, they, um, and it starts to disrupt both lysosomal function and cellular function. So in this family of diseases, they're multisystemic diseases affecting the skeleton and also other tissues in the body. Um, and then the severe forms are neurodegenerative and cause death in childhood. 
So available treatments are not adequate to treat the neurodegenerative disease. Um, they typically only target systemic disease in these patients. There is bone marrow transplant available for MPS1, but that's also only partially effective. So what we're looking to do is to try and really treat the neurologic disease by delivering an AEV9 serotype, encoding the defective gene, a, a normal copy of IDUA, and delivering this into the, the cerebrospinal fluid via intracisternal injection. And so with, by replacing IDUA, we can reduce the glycosaminoglycan accumulation. And with these sorts of diseases, uh, not only does a is AV9 give us an advantage by uh, distributing well throughout the brain with a single injection into the CSF, but you can also get cross-correction of cells. Um, and um, because the lysosomal enzymes get secreted and can get taken up by neighboring cells and directed into the lysosomes. So we not only have um, an advantage of being able to have a EV9 that distributes throughout the CNS, but then we can also correct neighboring cells that may be untransduced. So a single transduced cell has the potential to correct many other cells. And then in terms of treating the eye, our NAV vectors do target retinal cells. And in particular, if you look, compare in the non-human primate eye, subretinal injection of AEV2 versus AEV8 encoding green fluorescent protein. With AEV2, you can see nice transduction of the retinal pigment epithelium or the RPE layer. With AEV8, we saw higher levels of expression in the RPE, but also good transduction of the photoreceptor layer. And these are the two cell types that are most commonly affected by many of the inherited retinal diseases. So getting good expression in these cell types have the potential to create a platform for treating retinal diseases. So our first target, um, as I mentioned before, is wet AMD, not one of the inherited retinal dystrophies, but a disease in which we think we know what gene we can deliver to have efficacy. So wet AMD is characterized by the formation of new leaky blood vessels and an accumulation of subretinal fluid. And these leak blood vessels that leak into the retina cause loss of vision, um, in particular of the central vision. And um, what is known about the disease is that new blood vessel formation and the, and the accumulation of subretinal fluid can be prevented or reversed by intraocular injections of inhibitors of the angiogenic factor VEGF. And so this requires repeated ocular injections over time to try and maintain um, the, the correction of this phenotype. Um, so what we're proposing to do here is to do a single subretinal injection of an AEV8 vector encoding an anti-VEGF so that now we're basically directing the retina to start producing its own anti-VEGF protein stably over time. Um, and um, so the, the mechanism of action, again, is VEGF inhibition, as has been shown to work with other roots of, uh, types of therapeutics. Um, so then to come back to the beginning, we're using our proprietary NAV platform to try and treat diseases in which there is a high unmet medical need. Um, we have, there are multiple clinical trials out there for, through third parties that are using NAV vectors and showing some proof of concept and certainly showing safety. And in our pipeline, we have um, both five, the five internally developed product candidates that I mentioned and then other product candidates that are being developed by licensees. So thank you for your time, and I'll be glad to answer questions later.